In this video, I'm going to run through reading in a CSV file into Julia and then querying it using the query package. I had a bit of a problem at work recently where I was looking at a lot of transaction data from a different project, uh, from a new project that I was working on, and I needed to filter it all automatically. We were previously doing it manually with Excel. I thought, why not jump into Julia and see how Julia would go? So I put together this little example video of what I'm going to do at work to filter this data, but I thought instead of filtering boring transactional project data, we'll find out Robert De Niro's worst movies and then how he's improving on those worst movies over time, whether or not he's improving on those worst movies all the time, as read by Rotten Tomatoes and one of the first CSV file examples I found on the internet. So let's get started. Uh, I've opened up Jupyter uh, Notebook here. If you're interested in how I got Jupyter running in Julia, please check out that video. I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, otherwise, hit subscribe and YouTube will eventually recommend it to you. But I'm going to run through creating a new Jupyter Notebook uh, to read in this CSV file of Robert De Niro's uh, movies as read by Rotten Tomatoes and then see how he's doing over time. And that's going to be our model for reading in project transaction data instead. So the packages that I'm going to use today are query which is how we're going to uh, query the CSV data to find out those uh, worst movies. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Uh, we're going to use data frames to store it in. We're going to use plots to show how he's doing over time. And we're going to use the CSV package as well. So let's run those. Uh, while it's running, you can see uh, Jupyter executing with Julia over here when this little dot is filled. While that's running, we're going to read in our CSV file. So I've got my notes on the other screen here. My name's Chris, by the way, because you'll see in a minute, I'm going to read in our, into a data frame, our CSV file dot read and see uh, users Chris sample De Niro deniro.csv and so this is one of the free uh, freely available data sets that I found uh, when when looking for a good model of how I could show what I wanted to do at work automated in Julia now for a video that I could share and make a bit more interesting so we'll read in the CSV file it's still the first one's still executing there uh, okay so then while that's all running we'll uh, put in the next bit of code so that it can all run together. Now this is where it gets a bit more interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to query the data frame that uh, was just read in from the CSV file. Then we're going to, it, it kind of acts like an SQL query. I'm, I'm new to the query package. I'm, I'm new to Julia myself. I'm, I got a bit of a programming background, but I'm new to Julia and all its different packages. So if you have any questions about the query package or you can give me any hints of what I should be looking at, please leave a comment below. Uh, but I'll show you the example I found for query and how that's useful. So this is the Julia query package. It comes with a set of macros. So Q or uh, let's say our results equals, and then we do at from uh, I, our, our row variable in our data frame, DF uh, begin. And then we put in another macro where, uh, uh, actually I should show you first because uh, in the data frame, I know there's a, uh, a, t a column called score uh, and we want that to be everywhere less than 50. I know that's a bit harsh, but uh, as you'll see in a second, he's got quite a few movies there that are less than 50. Uh, and then we're going to select from those that are less than 50, the score, the year, the title, Okay, uh, oh, we should use curly braces for this one to make it a named tuple. It's a lesson I learned when I was preparing this video that uh, curly braces are the way to go, especially if you want to plot it later on, because it will name the columns here, score, year, and title. If you use uh, round brackets, it will, I think it creates an array instead. Uh, also, this collect statement is how the data should be returned. We're going to use a data frame uh, if you don't specify, if you just specify at collect, you get an array instead. Uh, so that's end. And then we're just going to wait a second for the data frame to finish. 
Okay, still waiting. So at, the trouble I had at work was that we had this huge data set that lots of people had worked on in different parts and it wasn't very consistent. So I wanted a more consistent way of reading it in and then evaluating it as well, which is why Excel wasn't great for what I wanted. But it looks like that data frame has finished reading in here. We've got all of, you can see what was in the CSV file now. now there was a bit of a mistake in the CSV file where it's treated commas as a uh, separator commas inside the string as a separator whereas you can see from the talking marks the original had strings in talking marks so that's why New York uh, has this extra column it's New York New York uh, Robert De Niro's 1977 movie New York New York uh, and it's put it into an extra column here so the reason I wanted to show you that first was that I'm actually going to put in uh, I dot column four there as well Okay, so now we can evaluate our query. And while that's evaluating, uh, this is this sort of uh, filtering on the where. I know you can do it in Excel, but it's something I want to automatically in Julia. So that's come through. We are looking at all of uh, Robert De Niro's worst movies. It's still sorted by year at this stage. When I try to do an order by uh, clause into this uh, query package of Julia, something went wrong. Uh, and it gave me this innumerable map instead of a data frame. I couldn't figure out what it was. So I thought, why not just leave it ordered by year? Because when we do the plot, it won't matter anyway. But if you know what mistake I was making with the uh, query package, please leave a comment below and let me know. Uh, I couldn't find any results online either. So the problem was I was putting an order by statement as well. Of course, once you do get the data frame, uh, and this result is a data frame, you can order it there. Uh, you, I'll, I'll make another video on data frames in a bit more detail later on, but if you're coming from a Python background, it should be quite familiar. If you're interested in that data frame video, please let me know in the comments and hit subscribe, and I'll make that one and it'll come out soon. So, uh, we've got our result here, our nice data frame. What's the, ooh, there's a couple here that are four. So the scores come from Rotten Tomatoes. They're not my evaluation of Robert De Niro's movies. I haven't seen most of these ones, particularly from the earlier years. So let's, let's plot this and see what it looks like over time. So we do plot, we'll do, uh, what did I call it? Result.year and result.score. Just run a quick plot to show you what it's like. And while that's running, uh, ooh, some of these got four, seven, New Year's Eve. So how's Robert De Niro doing over time? Th these are just a filter of his movies that didn't perform so well. H has Robert De Niro's movies that didn't perform so well improved or gotten worse over time? So uh, hopefully that plot will reveal it to us. But I'm seeing a lot of single digit numbers here, like big The Big Wedding in 2013 only had a seven. Uh, New Year's Eve had a seven as well. And some, but some of these earlier ones, like uh, 1900, uh, released in 1977, had a 47 score. So uh, I'm also not sure what role Robert De Niro played in these. It's uh, some of these movies a bit old for me, sorry. Um, but if you're interested in more commentary on Robert De Niro, please leave a comment below. I probably won't include it in this channel. This channel is focused on the Julia programming language. I'm keen to share some of the lessons I learned as Julia and some of the ways that I employ Julia to solve problems that I face every day at work. So if you're interested in seeing more about how I use Julia for practical problem solving, hit subscribe. I'll share more videos like this in the future. So that's plotted there. We've got our uh, score over time. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, just a plot of e each point of score and year. So it looks like uh, some... Now, it can be a bit deceptive here because there's a gap between uh, some of these years. It's not, it's not a continuous plot. You can see there's a bit of a gap in the 80s where, you, where there weren't many of these not-so-great movies. But it does look like he's become more active and some of his movies have been looking a bit not quite as good uh, since since 2000 and ish 2003 2005 there's, there's some not not so great movies in there so it looks like he's become both more active and uh, not perhaps a bit more variability in the score of movies that he's producing so again these scores come from rotten tomatoes i just thought this would be an interesting example of how uh, how you can query a CSV file using Julia and the query package. So what we've done in this video is read in the CSV file, then we've read it into a data frame, 
we've queried the data frame using this query package uh, and then we've managed to uh, filter it out and plot some interesting information. So uh, aside from the plot, this is something I was trying to do to solve a problem at work. If you'd like to hear more about that, please leave a comment. Otherwise, hit subscribe and I'll be releasing more videos like this shortly.